Hello and welcome to my talk uh, Pyrop, a modern HDL with a live flow. This is the work done at UC Santa Cruz. My name is a little background of myself. Uh, my name is Jose Renau, I'm a professor at UC Santa Cruz. I'm what the people would call a traditional computer architect. I work with out-of-order design and verification. I've done quite a bit of consulting and high-end CPUs, design, verification, performance modeling. This, this talk, it talks about Pyrop, there's a lot of contributors. This is mostly done by the MASC team. It's my research team at UC Santa Cruz. And those are the leading PhD students and master's students working on this project. So let's start with the origins, Pyrop. So why we started to do Pyrop? In 2006, we started to build an auto for the core. And what we found that the problem was with the tools. Uh, we have very long iterations for edit, debug, verify, uh, we found a disconnect within the design and verification uh, backend. Uh, many times we have to redesign the same block like three times. Uh, by this I mean like we have a correct block, like a, like a functional unit, but we couldn't reach the timing that we wanted. So we have to de redesign the blocks. And very lot didn't allow to parameterize the design. As a result of this, in 2008, we canceled the auto for the core and we moved to a new, uh, to a new language. Pyrop Alpha F4 was born in 2008 and was led by uh, PhD student Heaven Skimmer. So what's Pyrop Alpha? Well, for a Pyrop, what is Pyrop? Pyrop is a stone that resembles Ruby. It's not a Python, it's just in our research team, we tend to work with Ruby and we really like that one. We were doing all the prototypes and we started with a language that was similar to Ruby, but for hardware. The language evolved, it no longer looks like Ruby. Uh, we never have an internal uh, a public release, only internal releases, and we experiment with many things. So some good things that we have a new HDL, uh, it's not a DSL, it's a new language. We have zero code touch abstractions, we integrate it with fluid pipelines, we're going to see more about this later. And things that we're not going to see is like global type inherent, uh, in, uh, inherent uh, inheritance and global type inference. So I'm sorry to say, Pro Alpha is dead but long life Pyro Beta. So let me show you an example of Pyro Beta to how it works. So here we have an example of a ring we have seen before with other talks. We have a ring for four routers and a node. So here at the upper part on the left side is going to be the sub the subroutine to implement a router. So the first thing we do is if dollar from ring, the dollar is to indicate that it's an input, percentage is to indicate that it's an output. We built in in the language because many common styles tend to have some encoding for inputs and outputs. But one thing that most languages don't have is a question mark. Here the question mark is checking do I have a valid packet. So we embed many of the fluid syntax with the language so it's much easier. So we check do we have a packet from the ring? And then we check is the address the same as our local address? If so, we send the packet to the node and to the node we send whatever is sent from the to the ring, we send whatever is coming from the node. Maybe there's probably very not, the language will handle and type correctly the handshake signals. If the packet was not for the node, so we forward the packet, and because the ring in this implementation has higher priority, we add back pressure to the node. If, we, if it's not coming any packet from the ring, we just send the packet from the node. One thing that we do in our language is whenever we have two underscores, we are talking to the compiler. Here, what we are saying is that the output of this module is going to be fluid. We are going to have a fluid handshake. Now, to connect it, we just declare an array. Uh, we have a output variable that is DST we declare with two bits, and we iterate. The reason why we force to be two bits is because as we increase three plus one, we want to go to zero. We have a run by default. It, will compute what's the size for everything and it will not drop bits unless you explicitly drop bits. And then we just call the subroutine and we connect the input and the outputs and we have the set of outputs. So this is a typical simple ring. So Pyrop, what we find that the language is, is part of the problem but it's not the only problem. So the flow is more important than the language. And we add constructs for the fluid and the reason is not only to, to implement Fluid, is because the Fluid gives more freedom to the tool. Uh, the language interacts with the flow and we have a live simulation under uh, synthesis. 
So the main novelties, fluid pipelines, tool integration, light flow. So let's see, what is the fluid pipelines? I'm gonna go over a quick uh, straight example. So here we have a four pipeline stages. So when a packet comes, we are gonna have a valid and it's gonna be propagating. And as it propagates to the left to right, the valid propagates. Very boring, so let's try to do a little bit more what happens. So there are many ways to implement a, a fluid elastic and change. You can have acknowledge, you can have retry, you can have a stop. We pick one that we think is the best, and we expose that one to the tool. The idea is that if you expose all of them, it will be very difficult to implement a tool. And it simplifies the design of hardware. So how is the fluid pipeline that we do? So when the valid reaches the flop, that value is available to the combinational logic. And as the values propagate, so as you have a value valid on the flop, propagate to the next, that should be most of fluid handshakes will have that. What they tend to differentiate is how they handle the acknowledge or stop. In our case, we don't have an acknowledge, we have a stop. So any block can set a stop or retry at any time. So for example, this block set a stop. As a package come, suddenly they're gonna hit the stop. Even though they have the stop, the combinational logic, it will propagate through. Now, the value will be remembered in the previous flop. As another packet comes, we are gonna remember two values on the flop. It's gonna be a master slave latch, and we are gonna use both latches to remember value. And the reason is because this allows us to decouple the back pressure propagation to not be on the critical path. As the signals, how much uh, the stop is the asserted, then, we start to propagate the values out. So that's what is built in on the language. So there is no time to go, but obviously a straight flow is simple, it's very boring. Uh, it's more interesting when you have a join or you have a fork that you will get a node and send to two. Or sometimes you're gonna have a branch, you have a merge. For each one of those things, we have different constructs on the language to help. Now, how is the fluid in the HDL? So we have a common handshake, simplified concepts, because otherwise it's, you always have to think, well, how do we handle the signals? And those tend to be very error prone. The tool can leverage this handshake and it allows to do automatic transformations that a normal synthesis tool cannot do it. Now, the, we were coding many of those things with Verilog, but we found that it was quite error prone. And the solution it was to incorporate in this several aspects of the fluid in the language. So in a way, the, each one of the blocks, when it's declared fluid, it behaves like an actor model. In an actor model, you block and read. Here, instead of blocking and read, what we do is we restart the pipeline stage without consuming the inputs. It behaves effectively the same. So there are syntax like the question mark, that is to check if the packet has arrived. Then the other one is to have a try block, because if if you read something that is not ready, you will restart and try again the next cycle. That's why we have a try. Or sometimes there's a little syntax sugar that you can put the question mark in between. Now, I don't have time to go over the details of why do we pick this fluid pipeline and the implementation details. So those are reference and papers that you can go and look. But the idea is that there are several um, elastic pipelines, but the fluid is what we have here at the bottom, tends to have the best energy delayed results. And it also maps very well for ASICs. Now, one novelty, fluid pipeline. Second novelty, tool integration. So what we've been working at UC Santa Cruz is what we call the live hardware development to have faster iterations. And when we started, we integrated Verilog with Yosis, and then we have our own passes, and we output Yosis. The goal is to have an NLVM-like flow with incremental scalable hardware design. Now we have been adding many passes and we have JSON from graphics and several other options. One thing that we have is fully constraints to be fully synthesizable input and output. Um, and we support very log through Joseph, but we are starting to work with Fertile and we're supporting Pyrop. Now notice that I say Pyrop input and output in a way one thing that the flow allows us is we input Verilog and we output Pyrop. And then this Pyrop can go back and it will be fully synthesizable. Uh, any Verilog that is synthesizable 
uh, and you don't have combinational loops, can be expressed with pyrop. By having this, we can absorb, we're like a Borg in a way that we absorb the blocks. Now, this having the flow and the tool allow us to do many what we consider important things. For example, we can query modules in Pyrop. So here we have an example with UARTs. And we can say, give me all the blocks that have this variable set, UART set. And then we iterate over the blocks and we can set the address. We can configure part of those modules. So this, in a way, is similar to diplomacy uh, that it has in Chisel but we don't require to have any specific way of building libraries. We can just build blocks to query and it propagates in a very simple way. Uh, we also allow custom passes, so you can get a variable and create an underscore underscore poison. So what is this poison? Well, it's just a fictitious uh, passing in the compiler. Whenever you scroll underscore underscore, it's gonna be talking to the compiler and we tag this variable with whatever attribute is here. Now, later you can check because you might have a pass that it propagates poison or you can build your own passes on the compiler to interact with the language. The last thing we want to give novelty is the light flow. So I'm sorry, but we are all doting. What do I mean by that? That we only solve problems with short-term memory. Uh, if you want to solve a problem, you have to use short-term memory and usually it's in the order of a few seconds, ideally under two seconds. So you can have a response in under two seconds, you can be way more productive. What we are doing in this work is try to have a very fast incremental flow with response under two seconds. Obviously, this is not possible for everything, but the tools tend to do make clean every time we leverage the incremental synthesis, incremental elaboration. Now, this incremental is for synthesis, for place and route, and we have papers on that the last two previous years on this topic but also simulation. Uh, for example, just to have an example, something we can do. Uh, we run the simulation and every 10 seconds, 10,000 cycles, we create a checkpoint. And then you do an edit and you reload the last checkpoint. You don't have to start to re-execute from the beginning. You can edit code on the flight and reload from checkpoints and continue the execution. So summary. Pyro is a modern HDL with a live flow, uh, still internal release. We hope to release it in 2021, early next year. And we have a new language that is Pyro, but we have the flow and the tool that we think is equally or more important, that it allows you to do live simulation and synthesis. Uh, we have prototypes on this done in Ruby and published several papers. Now we're in the process of integrating to the common uh, live HD repository. We have fluid pipeline integration, the same. We have the prototypes, we're in the process of translating to LiveHD. And the integration of the Pyro with the LiveHD, it allows it to be more productive. Obviously, besides this thing, we have many other nice features, like we have a compact syntax, we avoid hardware artifacts, uh, we have a zero cost abstraction, global time inference, and we are very strong to be deterministic. So this is going to be talk my like. Thank you.